it's Ivy Slater, and you're listening to Her Success Story Podcast, a show where gutsy businesswomen share their success journey. Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Her Success Story. I am thrilled to have Judith Popo, who is the um, one of the founding partners in Legal Shred. Now, Judith has a very interesting and eclectic background. She started as a high school English teacher, went on to be a CPA, and then ended up, after a long story that I know Judith is going to share some highlights of, in opening a shredding business with her father-in-law based on supporting her husband's needs as a pharmacist and all the confidential documents that needed to be shred. Today, Judith has taken this company, grown, grown it, and merged it, and has two, um, two divisions, Legal Shred as well as, as, well as Med Weight, MedX Waste. Um, Judith, thank you for being here, and I'm so intrigued on, on your story and your journey. I'm looking forward to chatting. Yeah, it has been, it has been a very exciting journey, and it, it continues and gets uh, all more exciting every day, always new opportunities. And, uh, uh, you know, one of the latest things we got is a truck that does product destruction. And one of the first things that went through it was guitars. So, wow. yeah, the, this industry it evolves and, you know, that, you know how it is. It comes from listening to what your, your clients needs and, and, uh, you know, uh, finding answers because, that's any, any good business is about solutions, having solutions to people's problems and legal shred and MedEx waste. Uh, we, we find the answers people that know is not an answer. It's uh, let me look into that and find, find a way to get that done for you, whether it's us or we, you know, put them in touch with uh, another company that we have a relationship with, um, you know, you know, <laughs> it's exciting. Yeah. You never know. So I, I have to start back a little bit. In, in the sense of, I literally had a conversation with somebody today and said, you know, I hear people say, oh, when I was eight years old, when I was 10 years old, I, when I, was in, I knew I was going to do X, Y, and Z. So if you go back to when I was eight years old, there was no such thing as a shredding business. So let, let's look at, you know, a little bit of how did this become a solution to a problem you saw that all of a sudden built a major business? Because it's not something like, hey, I, when I grow up, I want to be, you know, a, you know a, a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, or this or that. So how did, how did this whole concept get started? So I think really at the foundation of everything that I do is relationships and that, that connection to community and just a uh, insatiable curiosity to keep learning and keep being keep keep being involved so I, I did grow up in a in a family business my father is a dentist and uh, he has he had a private practice my mother uh, ran the practice and you know I worked there I, I did some dental assisting I answered phones and things like that and you just really feel like it's part of your extended family you get to know people in a in such a a personal and, and uh, exciting way. So <clears throat> I can't say I knew I wanted to have a shredding business. I can't even say I wanted to have a business, but what I knew was I, I wanted to be involved in people in a way that was um, a relationship, providing, providing a service that was meaningful. And the first thing I tried to do was teach. I, I really wanted to be an English teacher. I had I have a, a, a deep affection for the English language. I still have that, but I just, uh, you know, I, I, I was overwhelmed. I was young and immature and just couldn't handle, it w w just really drained by that. That, that goal was, uh, that, that mountain of, of trying to make children enjoy English I don't, I don't know. I, I admire the, 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 uh, the teachers who stay in that because, um, it just drained me. And so I took and, a step back from that. And, you know, I, and, and it's interesting because I think we all have to, as we come into adulthood, we try different things and we, you know, we have an idea of what a profession is going to be like, but then doing the profession can be very different. 
Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> yeah, being I, in a classroom is, it's, it's the, it is a noble profession. It's, it's an unbelievable opportunity to change lives and make a difference. And, um, and then it's also, you can really lose yourself in, in that goal because uh, it's very hard to make people enjoy English. Uh, writing and reading are just not a lot, not, not something that people feel, you know, very interested in. And well, uh, so, you know, high school students are of an age of their, their, you know, testing their boundaries, they're branching out into their own ideas and, and, you know, it, I, I could see the age bracket and the time frame being a challenge. Yeah. So what happened was I, I, I took a step back from it. And, you know, like you say, it's like, what do, what can I do? Yeah. And my husband has always been interested in business. He had already been, had ideas of starting his own pharmacy, like you said, and how could I be in support of that? So I, I, I got the accounting degree and that certainly gave us a lot of of uh, it informed a lot of our decisions, gave us a, a leg up on feeling good at what we were doing. And then he needed a shredding company. And uh, one of the, the things that really drew us to the shredding business is, the, um, well, he, he started to wonder, he didn't feel comfortable. He didn't like who came in. He didn't like shred it. Ah. And he was very turned off by that, that business uh, mentality and three-year contracts and every auto renew and things like that. And he's like, you know what? I, I just don't feel good about this. And by the way, tax season is a lot for you. My father is retired now. And I, I really feel like he needs another, he needs something. So let's do this. Let's look into this. And what's really fabulous about the shredding industry is it is, there are a lot of family independent owners. So that was one of the first things that we did. We contacted shredding uh, equipment companies and they connected us with families that had shredding businesses, husbands and wives, things like that. And we flew out to Colorado and North Carolina and we just spent some time. So you did summer. market research. You got out there and really got it and took a look at the marketplace, so which is the, definitely- one of the smartest things that somebody can do. Absolutely. Sorry to step on you. It's so, no. uh, so I don't, I didn't, I, I didn't uh, make it to in, inherit my, you know, or, or partner up with my father because dentistry was, uh, it's a little bit icky for me, but I en- ended up with my father-in-law who's a, a you know, fabulous man. We, we, uh, we, we worked well together. He ran the truck. I ran the office. Uh, I, I did the networking. I, I, I made the contacts. And there we were making relationships and I'm 15 years into this business, still have my first client. Well, wow. I actually the pharmacy uh, was sold, but um, our first client was uh, the DOT Federal Credit Union, which is now wow. called Mid-Hudson Valley Federal Credit Union wow. and also St. Columba Church. So, and just the way that those relationships have evolved and helped me feel more involved in my community and getting to know the providing this service for the people in my neighborhood is it's just so rewarding it's so gratifying and that I, I really enjoy it and I, I, I go back to those relationships and it just makes my it fills my heart every every time I think about it so let me let me ask you this um, how did this become legal legal shred Wait, wait, how, how was the evolution and how did that evolve? So that happened because my father-in-law, uh, he decided he had, he had, he had enough uh, and he retired and that was about six years in and talk about relationships. I was so fortunate to have another company that I had gotten to know because uh, one of the things you and I have talked about is having relationships with other yeah. companies, even in your own industry, especially in your own industry. So there was another another company. I, I knew uh, Sean Fredericks and Jason Fredericks, and they had sold their business. And so really initially it was like, okay, what do I do? My father-in-law wants out and how do I put value on his shares? And they said, oh, this is how you do it. And uh, we're interested in, in being in that, in that market uh, again. And I, I said, 
fantastic because there's no one I trusted more and felt was more competent. And, uh, you know, I was just so excited because I, I just exhaled and said, Oh, someone who's going to, somebody who's done it to, and, and knows, knows how to do it is going to work with me now. I'm not, I'm right. not really, and, and because it could be I never, no, I was going to, I was going to jump in and say, you know, when your partner retires, it could be daunting to run a business by yourself when you haven't done that before. And then it also can be daunting to step in and build a partnership with people who you don't, you don't have long lasting relationships with. Yeah, that was, you know, the fortunate thing was I, he was one of the first, uh, Sean and Jason were one of the first people I did meet as I started this business. Cause we had a friend in common, you know, one of our, one of those seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. Right. Uh, and so I had known him pretty much since I started the business and he had been my go-to for, you know, whatever I needed when, when I ran into a, a question, how do I handle this? How do I handle that? You know, it was, it was calling a Frederick's brother. So, um, that it, it, it felt kind of natural actually to, to, you know, uh, phase out my, my father-in-law and, you know, but th- that was the thing though. I was very comfortable with, at the time we had two trucks and, and now, and, and I, 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 I am a small town kind of a girl and very comfortable, uh, keeping things small, but I, I did agree that they could grow it as big as they wanted to, but I was going to still have my niche. And I'm the, I'm the Hudson Valley gal. I, right. I, I'm red gal Hudson Valley. And that's, the, that's still my niche. And that feels very good to me, but we do now cover, uh, we, we cover New York, New Jersey, mm, uh, parts of Massachusetts, uh, all of Connecticut. And we have from those two trucks and I had one employee, I now have about 30 employees and over 12 trucks. And that's just with the legal shred side of it. Wow. With that, 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 that there's more trucks and more people and, uh, you know, it can be overwhelming at times, but it's also super gratifying because we've done it together and it's still family because I, I, we don't share a mother, uh, but we're, I feel like they're my, my brothers and I, I celebrate everything that we've done together. And it, it just, it, 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 uh, it feels really special to be doing it with them. You know, you know I, ha- I have to say, you know, you and I have had conversations in the past listeners um, and when Judith and I have talked with well, there, there's so much alignment. Um, I, I had a business po- partner, a business associate for over a dozen years um, when I had Slater Graphics. And we are to this day, like brother and sister. Um, even that we both have moved on in our careers, built different businesses today. Um, but where are each other's go to? Even you know, we go back to each other, brainstorm ideas. Uh, we 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 share family things. We share all the good things, and we're there for each other when those not so good times. Um, and and like you and I have spoken about, like relationships, be it business partners. Um, you know, people we do business with our client from our clients to our vendors and our partners are, you know, the crux of this, of every person we're meeting and connecting to long term has such value, especially when we're surrounded with sales with people that we truly like. Well, that's the bottom line. And like, it's the energy. It's like, what did, what, what attracts me to, to people like yourself and, and brought, I, I do believe that that's what brought Jason and Sean into my life is the, 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 that shared energy, that, that shared foundation in, in everything is about relationships and wanting and, and want that integrity of wanting to make a difference, wanting mm-hmm. to do the right thing, wanting to, to provide a service and make people happy. Like, you know, if our clients aren't happy, it's a bad day. You know, yeah. one, one client's not happy. That can really trash the day where, you know, maybe uh, 30 clients are happy and one one is disappointed. And it just, you know, that, that uh, takes takes you down. But that's our 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 our, our part of our, our, our mission statement is we go out there every day for cheers. We want everyone to we go to we take service to the next level and. We want we want to have make our our clients feel like uh, compelled to cheer for us 
and what we've done for them and taking care of them. And, and uh, that's how we start each day, reminding ourselves uh, what, what our core values are. And, uh, you know, and at the, at the foundation of all of it is that teamwork and the synergy. So let me, let me ask you this, because this isn't something I ask all that often. Um, I love that you mentioned the core values of the company. Um, what do you see? Like, how is it? How often do you revisit your core values? How often, like, do you do you talk about this in your your leadership meetings from your st- to, to your your drivers? I mean, how 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 does that foundation of we create core values in companies, right? But we don't always see what the impact is amongst the team, the staff, and then the clients. Oh yeah, that's correct. Right on that. Well, uh, we live our core values. We have a weekly meeting and we start each meeting with those core values. Our core values are on our wall, uh, our common areas, uh, they're posted. We give little um, bonuses. Sometimes we will do a little quiz and you know, uh, test our, our, our uh, employees or our, you know, our team members uh, and, and you know, reward them when they know they remember our core values and it's, yeah, I have them in front of me. I have them on my wall, on my wall. They're, they're everywhere. And we, we live them. That's what matters without the core values. You don't really know why you're getting, why you're going out there each day. So we, we do, we do uh, frequently go back to our core values on a weekly basis. I'd like to think on a daily basis and um, yeah, they're important just to center, to, to center every day. It's so true. It is so, so true. Um, what, um, what has surprised you in this journey of being a business owner, of building a business, having partners, you know, the, the whole journey? You've been at this for quite a few years. Yeah, well, I mean, so many things have surprised me. Um, but I think the, the way that um, really getting to know, especially your, your, uh, fellow independent treading businesses. I've gotten so much out of those relationships early on. We had some truck issues and I called uh, my friend Skip from SK paper and he came with his truck and he did our route with us. And we have since built on that relationship. We have, uh, I think we, we bought one of his used trucks and that's been a great uh, asset to our team. We've, we've, uh, we're, we're now uh, doing some, um, we're doing some subbing. Well, he's got some big clients and going into areas where he doesn't have 12 trucks. He's got, I think, two trucks. So we're doing a lot. Uh, he's helped us get in. That's how part of how we got into New Jersey. So those relationships with, so-called competitors. And that was one of the, also one of the greatest things was I had a competitor and uh, it started out kind of small. He had some truck issues. I was helping him out. And ultimately we, we, we took over his business. We took over his clients. He moved out West. He had had enough. His truck issues, you know, were, were more than he wanted to deal with anymore. And uh, that was just fantastic. That, that grew our business tremendously and there was so much overlap. We didn't even have to hire anyone when we took over his business. So uh, I really, it's so, it, it sounds strange, but don't short sell that, that uh, building relationships within, with people who seem like they're your competitors because they can be your best friends uh, on any given day. And there's, we, you know, we come, you and I, we come from this mindset of abundance and there's enough for everyone. And uh, the more you can work together and, and see everyone as just an extended part of your team, everyone, and how you can work together, it comes to you. And, yes. uh, and that's, our, that's our experience. It's, fa- it's fascinating. It's fabulous. The overlap in the networks that I've experienced, you know, what, the ways I've been able to help other, my, my sister in, in her job. Uh, at the trauma uh, center where she's doing bingo size and my clients are providing uh, prizes for, for her bingo size participants. Like who would have thought that, you know, that. Right. And, and I have, I have to jump in on this because I don't think we talk about this enough on her success story. And that is embracing your competitions as your closest allies. Um, and it, I am a firm, firm believer of, of it. I always have been, 
from, from back in the day as a, as a printer. I remember sitting in a Starbucks, probably it was on 39th or 40th Street on 8th Avenue. There was an upstairs seating area. I don't even think it's still there. Um, that's how far, long ago I'm going back. Uh, and we used to get together like once a quarter. And, and it, was, it was honestly me and a bunch of the other guys, um, all salespeople having their own companies. And we'd sit down over a cup of coffee and talk about the market. And, you know, if we needed something, we needed resources, you know, they would be my go-to. Hey, I'm looking for this. How do you resource this lately? Um, today in Slater Success, my company, um, I, I have some of my greatest, greatest relationships with my biggest competition. And then we pull each other in to work together or we brainstorm ideas to help each other. And um, I hope business leaders out there are embracing their competition as their strongest allies. And, and I think you said it so well. And through the and through the pandemic too, it's like, how you doing? How are you handling this? How how are we going to make it through this? And we we popped each other up, and and you know it was like you say, it's like, okay, what what can we do right now? It's the scary time we don't know when thing if everything's going to shut down you know what's going to open back up and you know what are you doing your best resource is the, the other people that do what you do exactly and are are you know kind of there in the trenches with you understanding what your what your life is like what your day is like and it's a great resource it really is judith this has been phenomenally phenomenally um, a wonderful, wonderful piece of information and insight into an industry we don't get to talk much about. So I cannot thank you enough for joining me here on her success story today. Oh, it's so always a lot of fun to talk to you. I, it, uh, I learn a lot. I learn a lot about myself when I'm talking to you. Uh, and, you know, the, it is a, it's a creative process. Every conversation kind of is a creative yeah. process. And we're learning. We're learning every day. As long as we're learning every day, we're living. Okay. Absolutely. How can our listeners learn more, more about you and reach out to you if they're interested? We have the website, uh, legalshred.com. That's probably the best way to learn about us. And uh, we, you know, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, uh, we're on LinkedIn. Yeah, definitely look at my profile on LinkedIn, reach out to me. That's how we connected. Uh, that is how we connected. So, hey, you know, link with me. Let's, let's see how we can help each other out. I'm I shredding is one thing, medical waste is another, and then just the the ways that we can keep connecting and keep moving it forward, paying it forward and connecting uh, the, the, it's a small world after all kind of a thing. I love it. I love it. I'm I'm with you on that. It's a small world after all. On that note, listeners, remember to hit subscribe just below. We come into your, in your podcast apps with new content every Monday. Take a moment and take a breath and say, what did I get? What did I take away? What did I walk away with from listening to do this conversation with me today? And what what you took away, what are you going to do about it? What action are you going to take from there? Are you going to reach out to somebody? Are you going to go find out your competition and maybe have a cup of coffee with them, virtual or in person? Um, What actions are you going to take? Put that in the notes below and let us help you Stay in action, because in action, we are in success. Thank you for joining us here today at Her Success Story. See you next time.